Thanks for watching Virginia this morning. If you have an Instant Pot and you like tacos, you will enjoy learning how to put this tasty creation together. Take a look. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of my favorite recipes in my cookbook. This is my Instant Pot shredded beef. And this is one of the most versatile recipes. You can use this as tacos, you can put it on top of a salad, on a taco bowl, whatever you want to do, even eat it on its own with a side of pico. But today I'm going to be showing you how to put this together into my favorite grain-free tacos. And the meat itself is very easy. It's very simple to do. We've gone ahead and started our Instant Pot and set it to saute. And I'm going to go ahead and add one tablespoon of avocado oil and let that start to heat up a little bit. And I've gone ahead and chopped my meat, so this is a great way to save some money on using a little bit less expensive cut of meat. I'm going to be using just a stew meat that I've cut into uh, one and a half inch cubes here, and I always go for grass-fed beef. And we're going to go ahead and just add our beef to the Instant Pot and start to kind of coat it with the oil in there. And it's very simple. We're just going to add one tablespoon of garlic powder. We're going to add one tablespoon of onion powder and I have a teaspoon of sea salt, and that's it. We're just gonna go ahead and coat our meat, make sure the seasoning gets all over it, and then go ahead and start to brown it while it's here on the saute function. And then it's gonna be super easy. We're just gonna put the lid on our Instant Pot. We're gonna set it to the default stew setting, which is about a 35 minutes worth of cook time once it pressurizes. And I like to leave it in uh, to naturally release the pressure for about 15 to 20 minutes after uh, the beeping has come, letting you know that the meat is cooked. And honestly, the longer you leave your meat in there, the more tender, the easier it is gonna be to shred. So a lot of times I'll actually make this early in the morning, uh, get the seasoning in here, get the meat cooking, and let it sit warming and uh, depressurizing in the Instant Pot for about an hour or two and then have it for lunch and it's so tender and so juicy. So that's about it. So we've browned our meat here a little bit. We don't need to overly brown it. You really just want to do a light browning on it and get the seasoning on there and we are ready to seal up. So go ahead and put our lid on, make sure it's pressurizing and we'll go ahead and set it to meat stew for those 35 minutes and we'll come back and see when our meat is ready. And while our meat is finishing cooking, we're gonna go ahead and put together the rest of the toppings for our taco. So we're gonna start with the very simple pico, and I've got about five tomatoes that have been diced here, and it comes out to about a cup and a half of diced tomatoes. And we're gonna go ahead and add some fresh cilantro. This is about half a cup of fresh cilantro. This is the juice of one lime. And I have a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of sea salt. And that's it. I like to keep my pico very simple and just kind of mix this together. It's very fresh, very simple, comes together very quickly. And that is it. We can go ahead and set this aside. And now we're gonna make our avocado crema. And I love this as a topping on all my tacos. It works great for salad dressings as well. So I've got one whole avocado here. And I have the juice of two limes and I have a quarter cup of coconut milk, and I always make sure to use a coconut milk without gums, just a very pure one. I've got one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of sea salt, and I have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and I've gone ahead and put this all into my Vitamix, my high-speed blender here, and we're just gonna go ahead and get this combined. make this sauce a little bit thick so I like to use a little bit of water um, to make sure that that gets thinned out to the consistency I like. Now it's all about personal preference if you like a little bit of a runnier sauce you can add some more water. I like to do just a little bit at a time until I get that perfect consistency that's gonna sit well on our tacos but not drizzle everywhere. That looks about right. Yeah, nice and creamy, ready to go. So now we're just waiting for our meat to finish up. We'll go ahead and get that shredded and start assembling our tacos. All right, and our meat is out of the Instant Pot and ready to shred and assemble our taco. So I've gone ahead and put it here on my cutting board. And my favorite way to shred it is just to use two forks. And then you really just kind of go through the meat and just you know, shred it apart. It's very tender, so it comes apart very easily. And I reserve a little bit of the sauce that's still in the Instant Pot. You can always put that on the meat, especially if you're just having the meat on its own or having it with a salad or a taco bowl. Um, for the tacos, I do like to keep it a little bit drier just because we're gonna be putting all our other taco, taco, uh, 
toppings on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shred a little bit here to show you how to do that. And then let's go ahead and assemble one of our tacos. So I've gone ahead and heated up some of my grain-free tortillas and I'm using almond flour ones. There's also cassava flour ones, there's coconut flour ones, plantain flour ones on the market now. So it's very versatile ways to keep this grain-free. And we'll go ahead and just get some of our shredded meat here and pile that into our tortilla shell. And then here's where the magic happens. I like to do the pico next. So we'll just go ahead and put a sprinkle of the pico on here. And last but not least, our avocado crema. And just like to drizzle that on there. And our tacos are ready to go. They're so good. You're gonna wanna live off of this recipe. You can get the pico, the avocado crema, and the, the shredded meat all in my cookbook, Wandering Palette, which is available on my website and on Amazon as well. Boy, Erica really delivers. Yes, I, that Instant Pot really gets it done. We we actually had, uh, my, my wife made pot, no, beef stew, she corrected me. Okay. I called it pot roast, it wasn't, it was beef stew. She made beef stew last night in the Instant Pot. Yes. And it was 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes, the meat was dropped off the bone, the potatoes were super soft. I mean, it was great. And we love tacos too, so this is gonna be a great recipe uh, to look at. Because it just, like, it really is magic. Like you don't have to yeah. do all this work anymore. The biggest hurdle for a certain someone was getting over the whole like pressurization mm. and then like the steam release. I was terrified. <laughs> I was just talking with you about Shane Rogers, shamefully delicious. She mm. got me over the speed bump of right. using this Instant Pot. She showed us how to do it on the show. This has been a couple years now okay. and there was like no looking back yeah. after that. What's the difference between beef stew and pot roast? Oh no, I, I think is I one think, saucier? Well, no, I think part of it is, and I'm sure someone will correct me, uh, but uh, it's the type of meat you use. Oh. Also. A stew meat uh, versus a roast meat? Right. <laughs> I don't Did know. Did you just make that up? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, beef stew, it's a different kind of beef. I think also how it's cut up or something. Yeah. Someone will come in to think about, think about being like, on TV and somebody's going to correct me. I uh, depend on, on this. this. So, but yeah, I think that's the difference. Um, and then I'll get clarification yeah. uh, after we go back. Sort of like on Friday when we didn't know where pastrami came from. And thankfully, yes. Valina Dixon that's was watching right. and right. said, it's beef, you yeah. two. Um, Someone text my phone right now if you know me in real life uh, <laughs> and tell me the answer to that question. I made a pot roast. And it, it was, a, they called it pot roast in the recipe. Right. So I made a pot roast the weekend prior in okay. the Instant Pot. And I tell you what, it's like... There is no looking back. Once you've done it in that particular machine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really, I know, I'm just. I well, it's really... a new version of the, remember the crock pot yeah. was great, yeah. but it was four hours, mm -hmm. five hours. So you'd really throw it on at 10 a.m. in the morning to then have dinner in the evening. Now, this magic 